All right, language explorers. So, Pride and Prejudice, chapter one. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. However, little known the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering a neighbourhood. This truth is so well fixed in the minds of the surrounding families that he is considered as the rightful property of someone or other of their daughter. My dear Mr. Bennet, said his lady to one of them, have you heard that Nether Neverfield Park is let at last? Mr. Bennet replied that he had not. But it is, returned she, for Mrs. Long has just been there and she told me about it. Mr. Bennet made no answer. Do not you want to know who has taken it? cried his wife impatiently. You want to tell me, and I have no objection to hearing it. This was an invitation enough. Why, my dear, you must know. Mrs. Long says that Netherfield is taken by a young man of a large fortune from the north of England, that he came down on Monday in a case and four to see the place, and was so much delighted that he agreed with Mr. Morris immediately, that he is to take possession before Mitchellmus, and some of his servants are to be in the house by the end of the week. What is his name? Bingley. Is he married or single? Oh, single, my dear, to be sure. A single man of large fortune. Four or five thousand a year. What a fine thing for our girls. How so? How can it affect them? My dear Mr. Bennet, replied his wife, how can you be so trisome? You must know that I am thinking of his marrying one of them. Is that his design to settling there in settling there? Design nonsense. How can you talk so? But it is so very likely that he may fall in love with one of them, and therefore you must visit him as soon as he comes. I see no occasion for that. You and the girls may go, or may send them send them by themselves, which perhaps will still be better, for you are as handsome as they are. Mr. Bingley might like you the best of the party. My dear, you flatter me. I certainly have had my share of beauty, but I do not, do not pretend to be anything extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give over thinking of her own beauty. In such case, a woman has not often much beauty to think of. But, my dear, you must indeed go and see Mr. Bingley when he comes into the neighbourhood. It is more than I engage for, I assure you. But consider your daughters. Only think what an establishment it would be for one of them. Sir William and Lady Lucas are determined to go, merely on the account. For in general, you know, they visit no newcomers. Indeed, you must go, for it will be impossible for us to visit him if you do not. You are over-scrupulous, surely, I dare say. I dare say Mr. Bingley will be very glad to see me, or to see you. And I will send a few lines by you to assure him of my hearty consent to his marrying whichever he chooses of, our, of the girls, though I must throw in a good word for my little Lizzie. I desire you will do no such thing. Lizzie is not a bit better than the others, and I am sure she is not half so handsome as Jane, nor half so good humoured as, as Lydia. But you, or, you are always giving her the preference. They have none of them much to recommend them, replied he. They are silly and ignorant like other girls, but Lizzie 
has some more of a quickness than her sisters. Mr. Bennet, how can you abuse your own children in such a way? You take delight in vexing me. You have no compassion on my poor nerves. You mistake me, my dear. I have a high respect for your nerves. They are my old friends. I have heard you mention with them with consideration these twenty years at last. Ah, you do not know what I suffer. But I hope you will get over it and live to see many young men of four thousand a year come into the neighbourhood. It will be no use to say, no use to us, if twenty such could come, since you will not visit them. Depend on it, my dear, that when there are twenty, I will visit them all. Mr. Bennet was so odd a mixture of quick part, sarcastic humour, reserve and caprice, that the experience of three and twenty years had been insufficient to make his wife understand his character. Her mind was less difficult to develop. She was a woman of mean understanding, little information, an uncertain temper. When she was disconnected, she fancied herself nervous. The business of her life was to get her daughters married. Its solace was visiting and news.